Hallelujah. 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 Elohim. 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 Mighty God lives in us. Mighty God lives in you. Mighty God lives in me. Mighty God lives in everyone who believes that Jesus Christ came down from heaven to intercede on their behalf. We are Christians, not religious people. Religious people believe that they need to go to heaven to meet God. Why Christians believe that God came down in human form to redeem them from the consequences of the brutal law? The Mosaic law 
showed tit for tat. Why Jesus' law, the Mosaic law, Jesus' law shows mercy by grace. We are under Jesus' law. Mercy by grace. Yes. I welcome you all, viewers all over the world. I welcome you all, members of Elohim Ministry in Abuja. I know for some time now, you have not seen me in the service physically. But spiritually, God is there present. And where God is present, His power is present. Where God is present, His deliverance is present. Where God is present, his healing is present. Where God is present, his salvation is as sure as the rising of the sun. Welcome to Elohim Ministry, members. Welcome to Elohim Global TV, viewers all over the world. Thank you for taking time out of your tight schedule to join us for today's wonderful service. Here I am once again to join you for the service. And before the message I have for you this morning, Please, take time to forget where you are coming from and get focused. Let yourself, your real person, be with you as you are sitting down, listening to me. Don't be sitting in body, whereas your spirit is somewhere else. At the end of the day, you may not have anything to take home after the service. But if you are there seated and your spirit is sitting with you, congratulations. Because before the end of the service, your blessing, your healing, your deliverance, your salvation would be as sure as the rising of the sun. Once again, you are welcome to Elohim Ministry. Today's message is going to be very brief. Because the Lord told me to pray more than talking, to pray more than preaching. So today's prayer will be very, very strong to touch your home, touch your businesses, touch your careers, touch your destiny, touch your family, your marriage, your health, and all that has to do with you. But before then, as usual, the Lord said I should set you aside for his special attention. And to set you aside for his special attention, I need your attention. Because to rebuild you requires your attention. The Lord said I should dwell on a message which has been given many Christians concern. Each time you make a mistake, you condemn yourself as a Christian. Whereas it is not supposed to be like that. Each time you miss the mark, many feel rejected. Many feel condemned. Many feel lonely, isolated. They fall into self-pity and eventually relegate themselves to the back seat in the society as if they are no longer Christians, as if they are no longer children of God. You are still a child of God. You are still a child of God. You are still a child of God. So today's message will give you confidence that no matter how great your mistakes are, God still loves you. <laughs> so that is why I'm going to dwell on a brief message that is titled Genuine Christians' Mystics Are Miracles. Tell your neighbor. Face your neighbor. Say, neighbor, your mistake as a child of God is a miracle in disguise. <laughs> I can't hear you speak louder. Tell your neighbor once again. My neighbor. Neighbor, 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 neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor. Listen, 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 listen. Your mistake is a miracle. That mistake you made, that made you feel condemned, that made you feel rejected, that made you weak in prayer, that made you weak in fasting, that made you weak in devotion, in things of God, is a miracle. Don't give up in that mistake. Rather, stand firm on your feet. And soldier on in Christ Jesus. So once again, the message is titled, Genuine Christians' Mistakes and Miracles. I'm going to take you through 
some books as usual. The first book I will refer you to is the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 10. Then the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 15 to 21. And same book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 18. Then you go to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13 and verse 22. And also look into 2 Samuel, chapter 11, from verses 1 to the end. It will give you a brief history of the mistake of David. And also Psalm 51, our usual secret of success, given to King David during his time. Because we are meant to borrow the secrets of King David's success. Because what is good for King David is also good for you as a genuine Christian. So that is it. Now, let me quickly take you to that book of Romans. Chapter 7 from verse 15. Are you there? God asked me to take up this message because many Christians are weak today because of the mistakes they have made in the past. They have condemned themselves to the extent that prayer becomes extremely difficult for them. Fasting becomes extremely difficult for them. Morning devotion becomes extremely dif difficult for them. Relationship with God has waxed cold. Their faith has weakened like a tree without nutrients. And that is not supposed to be so. Today, I believe this message will rekindle your hope, will boost your faith, bring you back to your feet as a genuine Christian. Remember, the message is titled, Genuine Christian's Mistakes Are Miracles. Now, let me take you to that Romans chapter 7 from verse 15. It's all about the account of the mistakes of Apostle Paul, which he cried to the Lord about. And the Lord led him to the vision or revelation of knowing that his grace was sufficient for him as his apostle. Are you there? Let's read Romans chapter 7 from verse 15. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. You can imagine. That was a clear concept of the fact that if you are not guided by the Holy Spirit, you would fall into self-pity. You would condemn yourself totally. You would relegate your history, your destiny to the back seat in the society, thereby allowing Satan to take over your life. In the area of self-pity and self-condemnation. Oh, I don't think I can make it anymore. This mistake is too great for me. I don't think I can move forward anymore in life. This mistake is too great for me. No! Don't say that. You can make a mistake as a child of God. You can go astray as a child of God. As long as you quickly come back to your senses. You quickly come back to yourself. And realize your mistakes and begin to ask for mercy, your mistakes have become a miracle. <laughs> yes. Once again, Romans chapter 7. Let's go ahead from verse 15. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. Verse 16. If I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. Verse 17, as it is, it is no longer I, myself, who do it. But it is sin living in me, you can imagine. Sin is synonymous with Satan. Sin is carbon copy of Satan. Sin is Satan in pre at present. Sin is Satan walking. Sin is Satan talking. Sin is Satan looking. 
It means when mistakes happen, it's as a result of the dominion of sin. But if you say no to sin and say yes to righteousness, you have overcome that mistake because Jesus will be there to supply your strength to stand again and move on in life. Such was the case of Apostle Paul. Let's read further. Verse 18, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. It means... Where sin dominates, good is absent. Where evil dominates, good is absent. On the other hand, where good dominates, evil is absent. Evil is mistake. Sin is mistake. But when we reject mistake, we take correction. And when we take correction, that correction builds into what we call miracles. A man who does not take to correction is far from miracles. A man who does not see wrong as wrong is far from correction. And a man who is far from correction is far from miracle. And when you are far from miracle, you are far from God. Because God is the source of miracles. Now listen to this. Genuine Christians' mystics are indeed miracles that establish what we call a cordial or smooth relationship between them and God Almighty. Between them and their body, their soul, and their spirit man, which is dominated by the Spirit of God. If the Spirit of God does not dominate the Spirit of man, there's no miracle. That is why some people will say, oh, I have been smoking for the past 20 years. Heaven has not come down. They keep telling me, repent, repent. Jesus is coming. Repent. Jesus is coming. I have been smoking for the past 20 years. I have been fornicating for, for the past two years. Nothing has happened to me. They keep telling me Jesus is coming. Please, they should not disturb me. <laughs> it is because you see evil as a culture. And whatever you see as a culture, you don't see anything bad in it. But for genuine Christians who have conscience, when they do wrong, there's what we call conscience-freaking Christians. These are Christians who are condemned by their conscience each time they do wrong. And each time their conscience condemns them in mistakes, they are put to repentance. And when you are put to repentance, you are open to corrections. And where there is correction, there is miracle. Miracle of a good relationship with God forever. Miracle of a new life in Christ Jesus. Miracle of salvation assured. Miracle of good health. Miracle of blessings galore. A child of God is not above mistakes. Take note of that. Mistakes are bound to come. And as a child of God, when these mistakes come, the way you handle them is much more important than the mistake itself. Look at the case of Apostle Paul here in Romans chapter 7, from verse 15 to 21. He never condemned himself. 
He never rejected his relationship with God because of the mistake he made. He never ran away from God because of the mistakes he made. Brother, he ran to God in supplication. He ran to God in prayers. That was why he said, Lord, help me for I am your servant. But my conscience is condemning me. Because the good I want to do, I cannot do. But the bad I hate, I keep doing. That is why I have run to you. Help me, Lord. Can you imagine the approach? He went to God the first time. There was no answer. Not that God was not aware. God, God was aware. God wanted to see how persevering he would be. How consistent he would be in his faith. He went to God the second time. Lord, help me. I'm tired of this mistake. God kept silent. And God's silence does not defeat rejection. Because silence is not denial. Where God is present. It was the third time he went to God again. Lord, help me, help me. God said to him, you see these mistakes in your life. I am fully aware of them. Because my grace is sufficient for you. They are miracles in these guys. So therefore, so down. This response from God strengthened Apostle Paul's relationship and fellowship with God Almighty. That was why each time he's operating as an apostle, he would never think of his mistake. Rather, he will begin to see the miracles as a result of his relationship with God. What is the lesson here? That you are a child of God does not mean you will not fall. But the Bible says, when you fall, don't stay where you are. Rise and move forward because falling permanently is not for you as a child of God. Falling and rising again is your name as a Christian. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, my name is falling and rising again. That you will not fall is not possible. When I mean falling means mistakes. And rising is correction. That you will not make mistakes in this life is impossible. As far as you're a human being, as long as you remain a human being living in this flesh, mistakes will come. Errors will come. But they are meant to strengthen your desire and determination for God. They are meant to checkmate your character and conduct before God. For example, if you are going too far, God can allow mistakes to humble you and let you know you're a human being. Don't go too far. If all is well, as our flesh may want it, listen to this word, if all is good, as our mind may desire it, if all is comfortable, as human being nature is, Nobody will serve God anymore. But those mistakes, those errors are there to keep you on track. Each time you are caught, you reflect and start praying the more. Mistakes that drag you to God to pray the more is a mystery, of course, a miracle. Tell you about that mistake that drag you to pray the more, that error that drag you to fast the more, that error that drive you to devote your time to things of God is no longer a mistake. It's a mystery. And of course, a miracle in disguise. So therefore, that mistake will not happen. It's impossible in your life. Mistake must come, but how you handle it matters. Many have gone astray permanently. Many are candidates of hell permanently. Many can no longer pray. Many can no longer fast. Many can no longer commune with God because they have completely agreed that their mistakes have condemned them forever. <laughs> As for me and my household, I strongly believe that mistakes must come. But those mistakes are meant to strengthen my desire and determination for Jesus the more. Make me pray the more. Make me fast the more. I'm here today because of mistakes. To seek God's favor for corrections. 
Why would I say my mistake has fallen me forever? Why would I say my mistake has really killed me forever? Why would I feel pity? Why would I feel condemned? Why would I fall into self pity? Why would I take myself to the back seat in society? Why would I isolate myself? No, I wouldn't do that because I know mistakes are there to keep me on track with God. Mistakes are there to strengthen my relationship and fellowship with God, as did Apostle Paul. Mistakes are there to show me how much God loves me. <laughs> Can you see the mistake you feel condemned in? The mistake you feel rejected by God in? The mistake you feel you cannot longer pray about? You cannot longer commune with God? The mistake is so much. The same mistake is meant to show you how much God loves you. Let me take you to the case of King David. King David was the greatest sinner the world has ever known. He was a murderer and of course an adulterer. In those mistakes, King David never gave up in his communion with God. He never gave up his devotion to God. He never gave up Spirit prayer I mean prayer in the power of the Holy Ghost. He never gave up in confessing his sins before God. He never gave up in admitting his wrongs. Each time he made a mistake, he would come back to God and say, Lord, this is what I've done. I am a sinner. Forgive me. Show me mercy. And God will remove his mistakes and give to him what we call a clean slate. What is a clean slate? A clean slate makes you appear before God as if you never sinned. Clean slate wipes away your past record of sins and gives you a new life, a new beginning. That is why those of you who are condemning some people who have made error today, you keep condemning them because of that error. I don't know that they have settled with God in their secret place. It means they are no longer... God is no longer seeing their error, but God is not seeing a battle between you and him, their creator. It means their battle has become God's battle. If you are fighting them, you are fighting God. If you are rejecting them, you are rejecting God. Because those mistakes have become a miracle in their lives because of forgiveness. Let me take you to that book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13 and verse 22, to see, to, to see the case of David and see how God Embrace him, whereas his adversaries were still condemning him as a murderer. His adversaries were still condemning him as, as, as an adulterer, whereas God sees him as a man after his own heart. David's mistakes became a miracle in disguise. Oh, tell your neighbor, your mistake. <laughs> your mistake is a miracle. Your mistake is a miracle. Don't condemn yourself. Don't reject yourself. Don't take yourself to a back seat in the society. Don't fall into self pity. Don't keep crying. Don't isolate yourself and be crying. Oh, I'm a worse sinner. Oh, I'm a worse sinner. Each time you remember your mistake, remember the case of David and act like him. Go to God in your secret place. Ask him for forgiveness. Reconcile with him, and God will turn your mistakes to miracles. Let me take you to that Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 13 and verse 22. Yes, are you there? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13 and verse 22. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God Almighty testified concerning David. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Can you see? A murderer in the past. A fornicator in the past. Now, by grace, by miracle, became a man after God's own heart. Who can condemn whom God has not condemned? Ask your neighbor. Neighbor, can you condemn me when God has not condemned me? No! 
Ask your neighbor once again. Neighbor, can you condemn me when God has not condemned me? No. Can you reject me when God has not rejected me? No. Can you destroy me when God has not destroyed me? No. Tell your neighbor, my enemy may try to destroy me. My enemies may try to set me aside for destruction. My enemies may try to tear my integrity and reputation apart. But God is there by grace to gather my broken pieces into a miracle forever. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I like that. Yes, that is the brief message for today. And I know your soul is blessed with this brief message. This brief message will go a long way to let you know that each time you make a mistake, don't condemn yourself. Don't reject yourself. Don't relegate yourself to the back seat in the society. Don't fall into self-pity. Don't isolate yourself. Don't stop praying. Don't stop fasting. Don't stop talking about Jesus Christ. Because you are not the first person that made a mistake in the past. And you can never be the last person that made a mistake. Mistakes are bound to come. But the way we handle them matters. But what is certain for genuine Christians, their mistakes are miracles. Because with God, all things works out for good for those who trust in him forever. May the Lord bless his words. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, don't go away yet. And I know you are blessed. Of course, usually I will be there to say, what is your take home? Tell me your take home. <laughs> Everybody will talk. But now, I'm far from you. I will you tell you your take home. Well, I know your take home is in your heart. God bless your heart. In the wonderful way. I'm praying for you. I know you're praying for me. Thank you very much. Because nothing makes you love a person so much as praying for them. I appreciate your prayers. You can see your prayers are working out beautifully for me. Don't give up. Don't give up. The fact, I'm, the fact that I'm not there in person does not mean God is not there. What is happening there shows you that God is greater than wise man Daniel. God is God at all times. Okay? Thank you for being there. Don't go away. My prayer is coming. Don't go away. If you go away, <laughs> you're surprised. I will just hold your leg. Where are you going? You have to wait for the mass prayer. Okay? God bless you. So before we go, I want to take you back to the crossover candlelight service on the 31st of December, the past year, 2023. God used us. I wouldn't say me because I have no power of my own. God used us. When I say us, I mean me. I'm Christ. God used us to, to give some prophecies about the events of the celestial corridor. And by the special grace of God, you can see many are unfolding. And recently, this is coming to pass as well. And I want you to watch. Watch. It's all about the issue of drought, lack of rainfall in some southern Africa and some eastern Africa and all over the world. God used us to talk about it. And it's actually happening. Let us keep praying because farmers are crying. And uh, if there's no rainfall, somebody like me will not find food to eat. So please let, let us keep praying. So therefore, I want you to watch, watch, watch. After watching, you can go ahead with testimonies. And uh, after testimonies, I know you also go into administration of you from heaven. And after that, your brother, your son, and your friend was Mandane will join you for my prayer. Don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go away. Tell your neighbor, don't go away. Wise man is coming back. Don't go away. Don't go away. Thank you. See you. When God's servant speaks, the wise listen. Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. Elohim, mighty God lives in us. God Almighty is all-knowing. Indeed, He is omniscience. God Almighty is all-powerful. Indeed, He is omnipotent. God Almighty is Elohim. Indeed, he is the mighty God who lives in us, who was and is and is to come. He knows the beginning and the end of everything, but he has no beginning and has no end. God Almighty knows the past, he knows the present, and he knows the future, and he alone can connect his divine representatives, 
here on earth to the events of the future. We at the Everlasting Light of Hope International Ministry are happy to let you know that our brother and our friend, wise man Daniel, by the grace of God, is one of God's representatives ordained by blessed memory, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is evident that wise man Daniel is enjoying the grace of God in the area of prophetic gifts, just like his mentor, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua of the Blessed Memory. On the 31st of December, 2023, during the crossover candlelight service, God Almighty used Wiseman Daniel to give numerous prophecies and today, by the special grace of God, they are unfolding before our very eyes. One of the prophecies God used him to release on the 31st of December during the crossover candlelight service was in relation to the coming drought in some African countries and he specifically mentioned South African countries and East African countries. Today, this prophecy is happening as we are talking now. These were his words. Number three. This one is for many African countries. I know the African countries, but I will not be specific. There will be severe scarcity of rainfall, which will lead to shortage of food supply this year in many African countries. Especially, wow, it's like I'm being specific here too. Especially southern and eastern parts of Africa. And this will affect farm produce and consequently cause hunger, lack, and want on the land. Africa as a whole, let us pray for our farmers and our land, for God to show mercy and favor to our farmers and their crop this year, 2024. Zambia has declared a national disaster and emergency over the country's debilitating drought. President Akainde Ichilema Thursday said the drought had devastated food production and electricity generation as the country battles to recover from a recent deadly cholera outbreak. The Southern African nation is suffering a severe drought as the El Nino weather pattern worsens harsh weather conditions attributed in part to climate change. The drought has destroyed about 1 million hectares of the 2.2 million hectares planted with the staple maize crop. 84 of the country's 116 districts have been affected, according to the president. Authorities say they plan to take food from areas where there is an excess and distribute it to needy areas with the help of UN agencies and local businesses. Zambia was recently hit by one of the worst cholera outbreaks that killed more than 400 people. Crops are struggling to survive in Zambia. Every day, Peter Shamaporno goes to check on his maize, and every time he comes out here, he worries. All crops have been destroyed. There's nothing good to look at in the fields. Hunger will kill us. President Hakainde Hichilema says the drought, brought on by El Nino and also blamed on climate change, will affect more than a million households. Zambia has gone without rain in the past months for weeks at a time. It wasn't planned. Uh, we did get a warning that there would be an El Nino. Uh, so we still went ahead and, and took a gamble and planted uh, 35 acres of maize, uh, a single crop that uh, definitely has uh, good potential in terms of income. Zambians have experienced droughts before. Farming is, uh, is in the blood. So uh, we, we understand their cycles. So there's some months, some years where we make a loss and there are some years we make a profit. So the only alternative source of income, unfortunately, still lies in the agri sector. According to the World Food Programme, Zimbabwe, Botswana, southern Malawi, eastern Angola and parts of Mozambique are also in trouble. Zambia's government says humanitarian aid will be made available so people don't go hungry. Until then, many can only wait. Harmutasa, Al Jazeera. As a response to the drought which is ravaging the country, 
President Haga in the Hichirem has held a press briefing at State House to outline the impact it has had on the country. President Hichirem has disclosed that 84 out of the 116 districts have been affected. The estimated planted area of 2.2 million hectares. Of this total, approximately 1 million hectares has been destroyed by this drought. The dry spell is projected to continue even into the month of March. As you know, February is ending. We will work to ensure that additional maize and other foods are brought in the country or mopped around within the country, wherever they are, to address this deficit. I'm a believer that before we place an import process, Minister of Agriculture, we must mop the food that is already available in the country. President Hichirema said apart from affecting the agriculture sector, the drought is also going to affect the nation's electricity supply. Equally affected, as I said earlier, is the energy sector that is expected to have a deficit of close to 450 megawatts. This may even extend to well over 500 megawatts of electricity this year. And you know what that means to our economy, to our mining, which we have promoted heavily, and obviously to agriculture. We shall look at importing additional electricity, including rationing electricity, as is necessary. We will also promote alternative energy sources. And in an effort to mitigate the impact of the drought, President Hitchrema has declared the situation in the country as a national disaster and emergency. We hereby declare the prolonged drought spell as a national disaster and emergency. Officially, we're declaring today. And this has been out of scientific work that was done, studies that were done, flights were taken around the country and other instruments that were used to help us arrive at this decision today. In view of the foregoing, your government will undertake many actions to ameliorate the situation. We call upon on our partners, cooperating partners, local and international, to avail any excess food they may have and other foods. And in his capacity as Commander-in-Chief of the Zambia Defense Force, President Hichirema had a directive for the men and women in uniform. All the defense forces to be involved in this fight to save our lives, to save families, but also to create a platform for a longer-term solution to drought. Because climate change is here with us. It's here to stay. So the defense forces, henceforth, will be directed, have been directed to support in the food production. Some of them are already in food production and already have irrigation capacity. But going forward from today, they will be required to do more. A mouth sectoral team will soon be set up to lead the way in implementing mitigation measures as a response to the drought. The team will work with line ministries and the disaster management and mitigation unit TMMU. Posharala, ZMBC News, Lusaka. This one is for many African countries. I know the African countries, but I will not be specific. There will be severe scarcity of rainfall, which will lead to shortage of food supply this year in many African countries. Especially, wow, it's like I'm being specific here too. Especially southern and eastern parts of Africa. As you can see, we are affected so much to the extent that we are expecting nothing from our fields. Washington very rarely takes stock of his fields. He looks after a family of seven for him and many others in this region and he hopes of a harvest have all but wilted. This is completely dry. We expect to harvest nothing and there is no miracle that can happen this way. As you can see, if you see this crop that I'm touching, as I lift the, the, the leaves, as you can see, it's completely dry. If you dare, as you can see, it's completely, completely outright. 
the two days, 25 and 26 December, are the only two days that we received rainfall in this ward, meaningful rainfall. That was the only two days. So completely we are saying in this area, we have nothing to expect. Not even a single cob a person can get from a field. Nothing at all. The period between January and March is generally considered the lean season, when rural households lack food while waiting for the next harvest. Aid agencies routinely come to the aid of many villagers, but this year they'll need to feed more mouths. The World Food Programme anticipates that about 2.7 million people, or just over a quarter of the rural population, will run short of grain in the first quarter of this year. And that number will keep growing as the year progresses. As it is now, um, our needs are beyond uh, 43, uh, 43 million, uh, of which only 35% of uh, those needs are currently funded. So as you can see, we have uh, a resource gap that really needs uh, stepping up in terms of resourcing and hoping that uh, the donor community will also be able to respond. The United Nations World Food Programme has included Zimbabwe on the hotspot list of food security risk in the world, along with others like Ukraine, Gaza, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, and a number of countries in Africa's Sahel region. We have competing uh, needs with some of the countries that are in uh, dire situations, talk of uh, Gaza, talk of the situation in Sudan, uh, even Ukraine. Uh, so in Zimbabwe, uh, our situation may not match with those ones. So obviously in terms of uh, donor funds allocation, probably priorities will be, more priorities will be given to such countries or communities that are in very difficult situations. But as WFP, we still continue to resource, uh, given the situation that we also have in Zimbabwe. The United Nations World Food Programme, working with Zimbabwe's government and other humanitarian agencies, has embarked on a programme to provide food to 2.7 million villagers in the country's drought-prone regions. The children are going to be very happy today. The situation was terrible at home. I am just hoping they will continue beyond April. She says, there is nothing in our fields right now. It's all dry and wilted. We have nowhere else to turn to now. We were starving here. We have not harvested even a single green cob from the fields. This aid has come at the most appropriate time. The Zimbabwean government will release a crop assessment report, but already estimates that the cereal harvest this year will only be half of the national requirement. During the first week of February, WFP estimated that over 4.4 million people around Zimbabwe were facing food insufficiency. Kyle Kumalo, SABC News. This one is for many African countries. I know the African countries, but I will not be specific. There will be severe scarcity of rainfall, which will lead to shortage of food supply this year in many African countries. Especially, wow, it's like I'm being specific here too. Especially southern and eastern parts of Africa. President Chakwera says his administration is currently conducting a scientific assessment to establish the extent of the impact of the dry spell on the national level. The results of this assessment will then inform the key interventions that we need to embark on. But I must emphasize that beyond government interventions, we will need the support of all Malawians of goodwill and our development partners to adequately respond to the needs. However, authorities in Mangoji district, one of the worst heat in southern Malawi, say 79% of crops there have dried up. Gertrude Kajere, a subsistence farmer, says the dry spell has wilted her entire three hectares of maize crops and that now she's surviving on wild tubers. 
She says it will be tough for me this year because I cannot even replant. I have to have money to buy seeds. Also, I don't have money to buy fertilizer. I would wish the government to assist. The meteorological department in Malawi says in its recent weather update that the dry spell would continue until the end of rainy season in April. However, Chakwera says despite unfavorable weather conditions, his administration is taking measures to ensure that the country's food security goals are met. He says his administration will help small-scale farmers to irrigate their fields as soon as the current crops are harvested. A total of 57,065 hectares under smallholders will be under supplemental irrigation in the 2023-2024 rain-fed cropping season. This will help to boost the production realized under irrigation. Chakwera also says the Malawi Prison Service and the Malawi Defense Force are also involved in the production of maize using supplementary irrigation. It is envisaged that the strategies put in place will ably cover the deficit that might arise from the current production season. Nevertheless, should there be a deficit, my government will import the shortfall so that no one dies from hunger in this country. Malawi government spokesperson Moses Kunkuyu told a press conference Tuesday that the government will from Thursday start the free distribution of 23,000 tons of flour milled from the maize grain which the World Food Program has purchased from Tanzania. For VOA Africa, I am Lamik Masina in Blanta, Malawi. This one is for many African countries. I know the African countries, but I will not be specific. There will be severe scarcity of rainfall, which will lead to shortage of food supply this year in many African countries. Especially, wow, it's like I'm being specific here too. Especially southern and eastern parts of Africa. It's been more than a year since the war in Ethiopia's Tigray region ended. People here are still trying to cope with its effects on them and their economy. And a prolonged drought is making their lives even harder. In the village of Atsbi, many families are struggling. I used to farm to feed my family and get medical treatment for my child who has mental issues. No rain means I can't farm and can't afford to buy medication. After humanitarian aid into the region was disrupted, help is now reaching some communities. But local officials say much more is needed. We, as the state government, we do not have any budget to assist. We even have not paid our government employees for the last 15 months. It's a very complex issue and we do not have any capacity to help. The Interim Regional Administration of Tigray says approximately 2 million people are at risk of starvation. Another 5.2 million need food aid. Water sources are drying up, and what people have left, they use sparingly, as none of them know how long this crisis will last. Harun Mutasa, Al Jazeera. As you can see, viewers all over the world, that God does nothing without his words. And when God's servants speak, the wise listen. We are praying for South African countries. We are praying for East African countries. And we are praying for the entire world for God to bring showers of rain to wipe away these devastating effects of drought because our farmers are crying for help and citizens are crying for food. May the Lord bless his words. In Jesus' name, amen. Elohim, mighty God lives in us. John 14, 23.
Elohim, mighty God, lives in us. Thank you for choosing to watch ElohimGlobal.tv, a newborn baby but mighty in the spirit. Thank you for joining us in beaming the everlasting light of hope to the world. Therefore, to get connected to ElohimGlobal.tv in your home now, here are the important step-by-step -step guide on how to search for ElohimGlobal.tv on your free-to-air decoder. Step 1. Before anything else, make sure you have the free-to-air decoder. Step 2. Take your free-to-air decoder remote and click on Menu. Go to Satellite Settings to add or scan ElohimGlobal.tv channel. Step 3. Input the scan details below. Satellite. Intelsat 20. Transponder. EF28K. Tuning frequency. 12562MHZ. Polarization. H. Horizontal. Symbol rate. 30.000 MSPS. Modulation. DVB. Dash S2, comma QPSK, FEC 5 forward slash 6. Step 4. Scan and save the newly added channel, ElohimGlobal.tv. Now, watch and enjoy. Keep watching ElohimGlobal.tv, beaming the everlasting light of hope to the world.